we are going to be looking at the three M's and R of math. So what does that mean? Well, the three M's is your mean, mode, median, and the R is your range. So we're looking at basically an intro to statistics, a uh, huge facet of math. Uh, if you ever pursue statistics, you're guaranteed to make a lot of money because there's uh, a plethora of jobs involving statistics. But Today, you wanna to make sure that you're staying organized. Addition and division will be the skills that you'll need to have. So at this point, in middle school, high school, uh, you can only assume that you, you have that hammered out. Uh, otherwise, you wanna make sure that you're um, keeping your numbers in order from smallest to largest. And if possible, if you can use a calculator, you can possibly do that, but you can definitely knock these out without using a calculator. And this will be a good foundation for when we get into doing box and whisker plots and other types of organizing uh, statistics. So follow along, make sure that you're subscribing, liking, commenting, all that will definitely help me out. Otherwise, good luck, take your time with it, it should be okay. All right, before we start actually doing some of these problems, let's talk about what mean, mode, median, and range mean. So the first one, mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's mean to complete, all right? I have a lot of jokes for you. All right, so mean, another word for that is average. So think about what your grades are. You add up all your grades, and then you're going to divide by the amount of grades you have to get your average. So average mathematically is adding all the numbers in a set, then dividing by the amount of numbers in the set. All right, we'll do some examples in a little bit. All right, so this is a good thing to write down because uh, sometimes it can get confusing. All right, and then what we also have is your median. All right, so median, what I tell my kids is median, think of soft drinks, median, medium, it's the medium number or the middle number of a set. So it's the middle number of a set. However, the numbers have to be in order after the numbers are put in order. All right, so you can go from smallest to biggest, biggest to smallest, it doesn't matter. All right, and then the next one is our mode. All right, our mode, I also try and think of the mood. So if something happens to you, if you, like a lot of bad things are happening to you, you're gonna be in a bad mood. So it's the number or numbers, because it could be more than one, you see most frequently. All right, so you could actually have no mode in the set. So if, only, if every number only um, appears once, no mode. If you have a number, uh, you know, the twos happen twice, the threes happen twice, and then every other number happens uh, once, then that means the twos and the threes are your mode. You can have more than one. And then the last one, our R, is the range. All right, so that is taking, subtracting the biggest number with the smallest number. All right, and this all can be done from the same set of numbers. And when you move into high school or if you pursue statistics, this is just scratching the surface with these. All right, let's take a look at this example here. So we have the set of numbers, and we know in life that, if, you know, especially with grades, that they're not gonna go in chronological order. So the first thing you wanna do is put these in order from smallest to biggest. You can go largest to smallest, but I prefer to go smallest to biggest. So 13, cross them out as you go. 14, because I, I usually uh, miss one or two. 16, we have 17. We're gonna list that both times. Oops, see, I've already missed one. So we actually have 15 after the 14, and then we have both our 17s, and then 21 and 23. All right, that's gonna make it so much easier for us. All right, the mean, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these all up first. So I'm gonna use a calculator. Now, you, want, you may wanna check in with your teacher first um, to see if you're gonna use a calculator on a test or quiz, because it's probably better to practice without one if you're not allowed. So after adding this all up, <clears throat> 
<clears throat> we get 136, right? <clears throat> then we have to divide by the amount of numbers here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to divide by 8. After dividing by 8, we can see that our average or our mean is 17. All right, and that makes uh, logical sense. You should not get a number that is not even in your set. Like if you're getting like 25 or if you're getting like 11 or something like that, that should not happen because it's not in the set of numbers that we have here. All right, so that's one of the more difficult things is finding your mean. The median is now looking at your middle number. So we have one, two, three, four. So we have a, a, an even amount of numbers. So this makes it a little bit difficult. So the number that we're going to have is actually going to fall right between the 6 and the 17. So you would think on a number line, what's between 16 and 17? Well, it's 16 and a half. Mathematically, how we could do this is we do 17 plus 16 is 33. <clears throat> we divide by 2, and sure enough, it's 16.5. So what we're doing here is we're taking the mean of those two middle numbers. All right? And then for our mode, remember we said our mode is the number we see most frequently. All right, as we said, the mode is our number that happens most frequently, and you could have more than one. But as we see here, we have two 17s, so 17 is our mode. There's really no math involved. This is really a matter of counting. Our range is taking the biggest number of our set and subtracting it with the smallest to find the range. So for that, we got 23 minus 10. Oh, sorry. 23 minus 13, giving us a result of 10. All right, the other term that I want to talk about is what's called an outlier. So let's say that these set of numbers here, which are going from smallest to biggest, are scores uh, throughout the semester in, in your math class, all right? So one of the things you can see is that, for the most part, uh, this particular student did pretty good. And then something happened here <clears throat> where they didn't do too well. So this would be considered an outlier because it, it sounds exactly almost like, like it would in real life. It's like the outcast or something that, you know, in this case would probably bring the overall average down, right? Since it's a 50, um, it, it, it's going to bring that overall average down. So it would be nice if you could just drop that. So you could have an outlier that brings your, uh, your data set down when it comes to talking about averages. And then in the event here, all right, so let's see that the student actually is, is really, really good, and they get something that has extra credit, and they get 110. Well, on the flip of that, <clears throat> this outlier is actually going to bring that average up significantly because you got over 100. All right, so that's how an outlier works. You, know, you can see that sometimes, um, you know, when you get into college and stuff, this is why teachers may drop the lowest score. It doesn't always happen. Um, but um, in terms of the mathematical term, this is called an outlier.